Hey guys, hope you're doing well tonight. Let's go over some of these new age uh, Pentecostal prosperity type teachings that we're hearing and uh, where these wolves are coming in and making it all about works and taking away salvation and these religious Pharisees are putting burdens on top on top of people while they themselves stand holy and righteous. So yeah, I was really getting with the Lord today, spending some time, uh, you know, and I just decided to make a video. So uh, yeah, I mean, why not, right? You got somebody out there obviously going to sit there and put false teachings and attack the church of God, twist the gospel, take personal attacks, but attack the, attack the good news, attack the doctrines, and attack the church, the body of Christ. Not having it. So let's go ahead and do what, what always happens when we put anything up to the word of God and watch it get shattered once again. Watch these new age, esoteric, hidden meaning, works, prosperity teachings. Watch them get shattered once again by the word of God. And it's amazing. It's amazing because you see the family. You see the true Holy Spirit working throughout his people. And it just, you just, it, it's been getting shattered constantly. It's so amazing just listening to you guys. You guys are so awesome, so amazing. You guys behind the pulpit just getting destroyed it's awesome and that's that's amazing and that's what's what's awesome about the body of christ and it's they'll try and say oh you know you, oh you're just being so angry look at you always using destroy yeah that's what happens when the devil comes into the house of god twists the gospel puts burdens on the family of god on the the men and women the children of god and attacks not gonna happen and it's just amazing as just like a family together and uh, you guys are just so awesome. I was listening to you guys have just been destroying it because it's the true foundation of the gospel. It's the true foundation of the word of God. And uh, nothing will ever stand to it. Nothing ever has. So, yeah, let's just destroy these teachings once again and figured, hey, why not? So, took a little bit of time. We'll go over them real quick. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. But uh, actually, real quick, before we get into it, let's let's pray real fast and ask the Lord for protect for protection, for guidance, and just what He wants, because that's what it's all about. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much, Father. I thank you for being with us, Lord. I just thank you that we're able to come together um, when we find time, because it's Your time. It doesn't matter where we're at, what we're going through believers your people the way that you work and you work throughout the world you have it set up and connected to where it is just the body and it all links together and it links together how you want it at the times you want it and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit late a little bit early it doesn't matter it all stands together because it's the true foundation of, of the living god and the true living word and i thank you that you have given this to us lord i thank you that you preserved it i thank you that you have given us protection lord I thank you that you guide us and allow us to do this, Lord. So you don't need us to do this, Lord. You allow us to do this because you love us. It's your people, Lord. And I thank you for your family. I thank you for your body. They're so amazing, Lord. The church so strong together, so bold in faith, Lord. I just thank you for them. And I pray and ask that you would continue to uh, build them up, continue to guide them, Lord. Know, know that you're there with them no matter what just like a family you're always there with them and the body of christ is always there with them we're always together nothing will ever break it apart because that's a true family because you tell us what it, and show us what a true family is you show us what true love is and you show it by everything everything physical what you did on the cross at calvary this life that we live every single day this this message this gospel that we have these scriptures it's everything lord prayer coming to you thinking about you Getting down to the detail of even just having hands, Lord. It's amazing. I just love glorifying you, and I thank you for this. And I just pray and ask that you would protect us. You have freely given us the full armor of God, Lord, because you already know. You have everything set up for us. You know that we don't need to do anything because you're love. It's not by our works. It's not what we could ever try and do because that's not what it's about. You allow us to do it. So when you allow us to do it, you set it up for us, and, and we just go off of you and we just ask for your guidance for your protection for your wisdom holy spirit i just pray and ask that you would uh just show us what you want us to know um help us to understand help us to speak truth standing on a firm foundation of the message of the gospel of jesus christ of nazareth which will never be shaken never be moved and it's to glorify you that's what it's about just to glorify you and i thank you i thank you for this opportunity lord i thank you for who you are 
I thank you for your family, Lord, which is my family, and I'm thankful for that because that's a true family, and I love them. They're so amazing, Lord. Thank you for them. Thank you, Father. I love you. Your children are so amazing, God. So anyway, let's go over this real quick because I don't think he, uh, I don't think he liked the message uh, that I did uh, just a couple days ago about Asaph, the uh, uh, the Levite, the outsider amongst the children of Israel. Um, even though, you know, okay, like, um, you know, um, God had his hand on him, specifically picked out by David, king of Israel, um, priest, one who would prophesy, um, one who would, who would master it in music. I mean, he was entrusted with the Psalms, which is scriptures, and it's also a hymn, which they sing, but I guess, I guess he just didn't like it, so, and it, it wasn't even about him. I mean, that's the thing. That's, that's the irony of it, is, you know how you can use, sometimes apply a, a biblical, um, like, character and a, a character's trait? I mean, obviously, we can with Christ. We do with Christ all the time, but what I'm saying, you know how we can... You guys know what I mean. When you could take a character and a biblical character and just line it up with somebody else's character. And it was just supposed to be a compliment. That's all. And I guess he just didn't like it. So, um, yeah, just some of the things. I mean, okay, you know, all right. You know, <laughs> that's the thing is you stand against the true gospel message. You put burdens on my brothers and sisters. You attack the family of God. You attack the Holy Scriptures. Then you've made yourself an enemy. And you haven't made yourself an enemy of me. You made yourself an enemy of, of the one whom lives in me. The one whom I love to serve. The one whom I walk with. The one whom this, the entire family, the entire body of Christ, worship and serves out of love. And not out of what they can get because they already got everything because he he is everything so let's just you know <laughs> we see super careful this time it's almost like they decided to pull out the word of god for once right but let me just uh, so i can put, let me just put the title end times right Ooh, end times right and then just pull anything out of revelation out of context completely twisted scripture and I guess that applies, right? Oh, man, he got me. No, I didn't get you. It was the one who lives inside of me. Because you're going against the true foundation of the gospel that you claim to stand on. See, that's what it is. Is you might as well just step off. Step off of that foundation. Because as long as you try and stand on that fake foundation, it's going to come crashing down. Because you're... What you're doing is you're not only going up against the true gospel message, the true scriptures... But you're standing on one that pretends to be it, which is going to be even worse, but okay. <clears throat> so be it. So yeah, and just pull anything out of Revelation, throw it on end times, right? You see, first thing you hear, God's using this ministry, me. Can't forget that, right? Got to squeeze that in there. God's using this ministry and, and me and you know I've heard it it's so sad because I know that they get pulled aside and they get told this and uh, they get told that they have to mention his name you know it right but he always don't forget to mention his name don't forget to mention who you come it's always self-righteous don't forget to don't forget to lift him up can't forget to squeeze that in there right God's using this ministry me First of all, too, hey, stop what you're doing. Bring it in. Stop what you're doing and listen to me. So God's using them, right? They're out there sowing seeds, preaching the gospel, praying for people, passing out track. And hey, stop. Wait a minute. Bring it in. Right. And then what do you go straight to? The same thing. Focus immediately on casting out demons. This ministry... Oh, this ministry was specifically found aged, founded on casting out demons. I guess that's why by the fruit, by the proof and everything, it's starting to fall. And I'm not talking about my brothers and sisters who belong there. I'm talking about the, the gospel, the truth that you claim to stand on. You want to put your ministry on casting out demons? There you go. 
Because it's not, if it's not on the true foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will not stand. So I'm not attacking my brothers and sisters. I'm not even attacking him. I'm attacking the one that is behind him, and I'm attacking the 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 uh, this false doctrine that has come in the midst of the body of Christ for this section right here. And because a one who's been entrusted with a, a sheep, a shepherd who is uh, failing to provide with actual true protection, with actual true knowledge and wisdom of the true gospel message, and instead of instead of helping them, giving them stuff to feed, pointing them in the right direction, protecting them, you're leading them astray, you're throwing burdens on them. Sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Sorry, guys. Please forgive me. Oh, you're so angry. Get angry now. Give me a break. You you want to do that? You want to go to that too? Guess you forgot about that, right? Yeah, get angry. Righteous anger for those wolves amongst the sheep, amongst the flock, twisting and turning gospel, attacking the Lord Jesus Christ, attacking the gospel, attacking the family. Yeah. Oh, oh don't get angry now. They'll say, oh, you're just a, you know, oh, you're, you're mocking. It's just how they perceive it. Because that's all it is to them. It's perception. It's how they view it. Oh, you're just a mocker. While they're sitting there mocking the true gospel, mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. Hypocrites. They always insert themselves, too. That's the thing. They always insert themselves, not only in the scriptures, but they automatically think everything you're talking about just has to do with them. And just, you see it, it's just so quick. Boom! And they, it, it, not only is it that their foundation is not firm, that they attack out of selfish ambition, out of pride, out of anger and sin, even though it's not rage and wrath. And that's the thing, people look at him. I can be super calm and talk very angrily. And whether it be the tone, whether it be aggressive, people just don't put one and one together. Or you can just be, they'll just, you know, angry and wrath. See, it's not like that. It's just how you see it. And that's these false sowings of these seeds. So we see it's focusing. This ministry is not off the gospel, right? Stop sowing. Stop doing it. Because it's not on the gospel. It's not on the true message. But what gets me is he stops he stops those who, who have been called by God and, and, and calls them to him and, and puts burdens on them, attacks the true message, twists it. Who does that sound like? So we see he says, okay, some demons came out right away, some take time. And it's funny how all of a sudden now it just takes time, right? And What do you mean by take time? All right, we're going to cast this demon out. This guy's just like pulsating. You know what? All right, that was it. Hey, good job, guys. Um, so what are we going to do? You want to go? Okay, I'm going to uh, break. Are you going to go to the grocery store? Yeah, you know, that demon is just going to come out in about an hour. Don't worry, it'll come out. Sounds like a cover. Sounds like they're just using an extra excuse. Something else that they can use. Oh, it'll just, it'll come. It doesn't come out right away. Ah, so let's go to actual, so this definition of, of an hour for that hour in Greek um, is a definite uh, space of time. It's absolutely definite. And it's a, it's a particular amount of time. It's a limited amount of time, specifically short for this. But they'll twist it and they'll try and turn it into like season. Oh no, it's a season. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so uh, Billy's been healed but don't worry, uh, that demon's going to come out in a season. So you have all winter. It'll come out eventually. Give me a break. Yeah, it's just day, hour, in season. Even they think that just because they go to the scriptures, they pull out like the Greek word for it. They can just take whatever the one they want. Day, hour, season. No, it's not how it goes. And then so when we actually go to the true gospel message, we go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 18.
Okay, so they always like to leave this out to you. Let's go to verse 16 and start verse 16. It says, I'll start in verse 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic, and he suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire, and often into water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Don't forget that now, right? And I actually, you know what? I think last time, I, I think when I made the video, guys, I think actually a couple days ago when I made the other video, I think I actually personally left out perverse generation. So I am guilty of that. So I apologize for that. I think when I use that term, I didn't go to the scripture and I think I left out perverse generation and uh, yeah, just convicted. I'm sorry guys, I repent and uh, just try and double check this part, but it doesn't, it doesn't beat the fact that that's still not the answer. Just because when I go to the word of God, I respect it and I respect you guys. I respect anybody who's listening because the word goes above anything. So down to the exact detail, the exact context, it has to be right. It's, you know, so if I miss a word and I, or I miss something and I, it comes to me, I'm convicted of it and I remember it. I will repent. I will bring it up and say, I'm sorry. So we see that it's a perverse generation. So how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And that child was cured from that very hour. Now the context of this is that moment. And the disciple, notice how Jesus didn't say, okay, you know, go your way, go wash, go do this. And the, uh, the demon came out. No, because the context is for that time. That's that specific time right there. And he says it's because of your unbelief. So you couldn't cast it out because of your unbelief. And I think that's what I said last time. I think I was referring to because of your unbelief, but it doesn't matter because Christ says faithful and perverse generation. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that's all because that's what it is. It's taking Christ is taking the Old Testament, what the law is, all what it, all the complexity of of, of the perfect salvation of what's impossible, and just boop, top, putting it in just a one. Believe in your heart. And in, in, in repenting, if you believe, you repent. It's, it's come. If you truly believe, you will repent. It's not a work. You change your mind. It's, it's a total change of mind. So, you know, it didn't just come out that time. Some come out later. All right, so you break. All right, guys. What are you guys doing? You guys good? Okay, cool. Hey, don't worry about him. You know, he's good. Oh, wait, did he walk up and just take off? He still got a demon in him? Oh, okay, no, it'll come out later? Okay, cool. Oh, no, he's he's still uh, convulsing in the chair? He's violently uh, convulsing in a chair and hasn't fell out yet? That's okay, we'll leave him right there. It'll come out later. So... You see, with the pick and choose, right? Taking it out of context. Making his ministry about casting out demons. Not even the, not even the prophets and the disciples had this power. Wow, you see what he's doing? He's making himself as Christ. That's what it is. That's what this... It has turned into... It went from... Obviously, the works is still there. And it turned into just... Uh, it's probably still got prosperity. I mean, obviously, it's all still linked to that because that's the core root of it, sadly. But it's turned into some weird New Age, esoteric, hidden uh, Jewish cabal. I think he's turned in. I think he thinks he's like some sort of special race or something. I think he realized that he can't. if he can't get anything out of God anymore, he thinks he's, he's going to try and get some out of the world. And I think he's be believed a lie about how he's from... Uh, a specific Jewish race that uh, is better. He's believing a lie, an esoteric, satanic. And it all comes out. 
So, I mean, because he's up, you know, wow, you know, Christ is telling him, showing him, just like, you know, wow. Not even the disciples, not even the prophets were kind of like this, you know? Adding whatever, taking away faith, planning doubt, adding works. All about certain times when they want, man. Not even the prophets could do that in the Old Testament. Only Christ can do that. Hey, all right. So, you know the thing too. Yeah, basically, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, you think? Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, you could say that. Prayer and fasting to build up faith, not works. Always highlight. Okay, but this comes with prayer and, and fasting tie in what what christ made about faith and tie it into works now you gotta pray now you gotta fast okay sweet so if i just go pray and i just skip a meal now i can do it yeah no you pray and you fast to build your faith build your trust build your relationship in the, with god let him discipline you i'm sorry guys i'm sorry that i'm like it's just like, it's almost like it's, uh, like he knows this. It's almost like he knows this, but like, he's chose to, to go against it. And now because of that, I think he's been blind to the reality of it. Um... Yeah, prayer and fasting build up faith, and and that's why you pray. That's why you fast, family. But yeah, then it'll be all good, right? So notice, and that's what I'm saying with Christ when He says the perverse generation here in verse 17, is because when when you get in with God and and you spend time with God and in prayer and fasting, you see how they're taking away that sentimental meaning, that one-on-one -on -one time, that growing with Him. Learning with him just you and him and building you up showing you things, you know And making it just about works But perverse you need to wash clean you will do that spending time in the in his in with him In word in prayer when you focused on him and focused on on, on the truth He will lead you he will show you and eventually that's what that's what it comes down to the gospel message repenting and believing so you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to prayer, you need to do that. Works, 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 works. What can you get out of it? Ultimately, that's what it is. It's making it what you can, it's prosperity. What can I get out of it? Okay, this comes with prayer, with fasting. Gotta pray, gotta fast to be able to cast out demons. You know, or just build up your faith. And stop getting people who are actors, people who are frauds. They totally take away faith, compassion, love of why you do it, you know, why you grow. And, uh, you know, they always, well, Jesus did it. Well, Jesus is doing this. Yeah, this is Jesus. Jesus is God. You're not Jesus. Well, I have Jesus inside of me. Which, which room, which house is Jesus in? Give me a break. You're not Jesus. Jesus did this because he was Jesus. Always insert self, insert self, self-glory, self-righteous. Instead of taking, either taking away his glory and they're twisting the scriptures, twisting the context. Not only attacking the gospel, attacking him. Attacking the family of God, but taking away his glory. But they never will. They'll never be able to. Because family, we're, you're always going to worship him and praise him. And even if for some reason nobody would to praise and worship him, these rocks out here, you remember what he said, are definitely for surely going to open up in prayer and praise. Yeah, that's that's Christ. It's his glory. And that's the thing, like imagine how much like glory you could give God, you could have given God. 
Imagine how many people could have heard the gospel. Imagine what you could have done with this amount of time and look at what you decided to turn it into. How much glory you could have given God because God has given you that platform. God gave you that platform and look at what you're doing. Look at what you could have done. You want to make it about works? Look at what you could have done. <laughs> Um, so just imagine how much building up you could have done on the family, on the body of Christ to those around. People could have heard the actual gossip, gospel message in the last days. It's a shame. You guys take your spiritual walk seriously, just like him. I'm sorry, but did any of you guys not take your spiritual walk seriously? Uh, it's so self righteous You take your spiritual life seriously. I didn't know you guys weren't. Another thing. <laughs> this is funny too. Cool. I think you're so clever. He thinks he's so cunning. He doesn't realize, man. I'm not your enemy. But you have made your enemy... You have made your enemy the true gospel and what you're doing to the body of Christ and what you're doing to my Lord and Savior, you have made, you have embraced the enemy. You see, in war, when you try to use your sword, remember, it's, it's not your sword. If you don't sharpen it, it will go ding. <laughs> It'll go ding, right? That's weird. Kind of added works to that, didn't we? How do you sharpen it? That's weird. You don't sharpen the Word of God. You don't sharpen the Holy Spirit. Your sword needs to be as sharp as His sword, guys. Hey, or else it's going to go ding. Remember, because you, that might be your sword, but it's not the true and, and, and living Word. The Spirit of truth. Because no sword's different, guys. You don't have a different sword. I don't have a different sword. Because it's not physical. It's not works. And what are you going to sharpen it? What are you going to add to the word? Nothing new. Definitely take away. Take away his glory. Take away the gospel message and salvation. But it needs to be as sharp as his sword, guys. Or else it's going to go ding. That's so weird. I, I, I thought metal that hits with metal. Regardless, it goes ding. Yeah, but none of our swords are different. They're not used different. His might be, but God supplies it. You think God's going to give you a sword? Okay, now go out there. And after a little bit of time, you're, you know, you're going to, the Holy Spirit's going to need to be sharpened. And uh, it's going to be up to you. Yeah, no, God supplies. See, the doctrine and the faith of what they have in their God, who they have made their Christ, it's not the true and living Christ. It's not the Holy Spirit. So they're, they need to sharpen their sword. But not us. See, you guys, you guys have the true living word of God, the Holy Spirit inside of you. Sharper than any double-edged sword. See, that's the thing. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces. So he applies it to, some, to physical. It's not a double-edged sword. Here, let's go here. Because it's not physical armor, but for theirs, for them it is. Take the helmet of the sword. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's not a physical sword. It's not a knight sword. I mean, when we look at it in a context of being physical, yeah, I mean, we would look at like Roman armor, obviously. I'm not taking away from that. But just applying it to it, the, their sword is physical. And it goes ding because it's applied physical. But our sword and your sword, those who truly belong to Christ, I'm talking to you, family. You have the true Holy Spirit, which God provides. You don't need to sharpen it. You don't need to worry. He fights through you. Nothing will be able to stand 
See, their swords go ding because their swords clash with the true and living God, the true word of God. Our swords aren't different, family. But yeah, sharp. Is that some sort of sick, like weird uh, meaning for sharpen it of some esoteric hidden meaning that you're slipping in there? You need to sharpen your sword. Uh, yeah, you don't sharpen the word of God. Now, I, I obviously believe in becoming familiar with the scripture so that when you go out there, you know how to handle your weapon. But you don't need to sharpen it. Yeah, so sword of the spirit, word of God. So he is the sword, the ghost. So that's man-made. Their sword is man-made. And that's why it continues to fall and continues to crash because it cannot stand to the truth. Yeah, it says, don't trust God to provide, right? You trust God to provide because it's nothing that we could do, can't ever do. It's by him and him, he who provides. No, yeah. Don't have the muscles to hold up your shield. You do realize, family, that you see what he's doing here. Your shield is the shield of faith. So what he's done is he's done and he's taken it and made it about works. What you do. You gotta hold your shield up, gotta get muscles, gotta work, gotta build that faith up. It's what you do. You, 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 you. How what you do on the outside, the physical, to hold up the faith. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's it's just by believing. God is who builds you up. God is who grows you, who works through you, who builds you up. Because you're no longer yours. You're, you can't do anything anyway. It's Him. You belong to Him. Because it's all His glory. Because it, that's why the firm foundation, the truth, stands. Because it's only by Him. Everything else falls and it crashes and it goes ding. So they make, make the faith about works. What you do. What you do. And man. Because God's going to just, okay, here you go. Take this shield. God's going to give you and provide for you what you can't handle, what you can't hold up. It's what you do, right? And you you guys need to, not, not right? You guys don't need to build up on the inside. Build up the faith like the Apostle Paul says, where I no longer worry about my outside. And building up outside where they get a, a perishable crown, but you build up the inside. Because it means something. But hey, you know what? you guys continue to build up your muscles maybe you'll be able to hold that shield up all day do you see how how that could you imagine oh it's getting heavy oh it's getting so heavy it's getting so heavy it's getting so heavy it's all what you do could you imagine not you guys family so you have the true holy spirit inside of you you don't have to do anything god has protected you god has girded you god has shod your feet god has ironed your heart your breastplate not ironed your heart, like hardened it, but ironed over it to protect it. The enemy. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. Um, the helmet. He gave you the true helmet of salvation. And he supplied you with the sword, the spirit, the word of God who works through you, which is him. <laughs> and he's going to give you a shield because he supplies. He knows what you need. Because you're fighting a war that you cannot win. Nor should we even be a part of, but by his, by his glory, because he's so righteous, he's so holy, all he is is love, and he proves it every day in every way, in every aspect, he allows us to do this, and he allows us to fight for him. You guys are true warriors in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords army. He looks at you guys. Just like, just like one would look at his bride and he's so proud, he looks at you guys and he's just obsessed. He's just like, yeah, because you know how like, well, you guys know how it is. Well, not all of you, but it's like, a, I'm not going to compare it because there's no comparison, but it's just like a husband and a wife. When a wife is, has her way of, of kind of being feisty in a way, I guess. But standing up for her husband and the husband allows it. Like, no, I don't even need to. Like, yeah, she's got it. The Lord looks at you and just and just is like, wow. And is just in love. And 
just amazing and he's just obsessed and he allows us to do this because because of his love that's what it is because of his mercy because because he can because he can he doesn't have to he doesn't need to because he can because he's awesome yeah could you imagine that okay here you go here's some armor just go ahead and throw it on over time you know you're gonna work you're gonna build up yeah pff, get out of here get that trash out of here Faith the size of a mustard seed because it's just trusting in the Lord. He holds it up because you're yoked with him. You're not yoked with works. You're not yoked with the world. You're yoked with the true and living God. You have the ghost, the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But they always make it about, uh, you know, always try and up it. Always try and up what the Lord has done in his gospel and his message about grace. Because that's what it is. That's what it comes down to is the shield of faith, our faith. So they twist it and make it about works. It's, that's our gospel, man. That the Lord Jesus Christ came and died for us, gave himself for us. And, and by him, by his blood, we're set free. And after three days, he raised and is now salvation for all who believe and call upon him. Yeah, so just, it's always outward. I... Uh, I, 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 me, 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 you need to that, you need to be as strong as him and hold it up, guys, hey, you need to have, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's self-righteous faith, you need to have self-righteous faith and be able to hold it up like him, right, see how they just lay burdens on over and over and over and over again, make sure to take your shield up, and, and stay as super sharp as he is so you guys can slay demons. Because that's what it's all about, right? That's what the ministry is about. You keep your armor, your sword shape, so you guys can slay demons. Yeah, they're not demons. They're not real demons. We'll get it. We'll go over that, too. And I don't mean, obviously, that they're not real demons out there, that people don't actually cast out demons. I just mean, I'm talking about the fake uh, convulsing and, and spit. And I'm talking about convulsing in a chair. And uh, I'm also talking about uh, all of a sudden just different times now in different ways. And uh, yeah, it's just so weird. Man. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. Those demons, Th those demons who are apparently in the children of God. And I'm not attacking God's children. I just, I believe there's children, God's children there that, are being, that are being deceived. Because I have brothers and sisters there that I love. I mean, I, obviously, I love them all. That's what I'm saying. And you see them. You see them. It's just, I, you believe, you see some of them. I mean, you see how they... I'm just glad I started to hit them. You know, whether... I just want you guys to know that's not what it's about, man. It's not, it's not about, oh, being right or wrong. It's not about... Oh, yeah, they're going to try and take you. Where, where am I going to take you? Please, he doesn't understand of what he's been given, but what he's turned it into. It's about love, and it's about the family, the body of Christ. It's about the children of God. It's just about the truth. That's what it is. It's about standing up for the true gospel message and going after um, laws that have been put in here and twist and going after heresy. And... uh yeah, it's just laying burdens. And that's what, I, family, I don't want you guys to ever think, you know, like I'm going after um, the brothers and sisters there. I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. Not even some of the teachers. I believe some of the teachers have been put in that corner. I believe this has been turned into like some weird type cult. A, the occult almost. Not the occult, but occultish. It's starting to. And, uh, yeah, man, I just, it's sad, man. It's because those are the children of God. And I'm not going to have it. So. Yeah, and the one definitely, the one inside of me absolutely is not going to have it. See, I wouldn't even be able to, to, to have that, have this, this, this feeling, this love for, for, for him, for the family of God, for God, for God himself, obviously, if it wasn't for God. Man. 
So he said, "You can't carry it. If you can't carry it, and that's when you die." Okay. Yeah. Awesome. If I die, then I'm gonna die. But it's up to you, right? Works. How you live. How you die. Oh, you didn't carry it. So, oh, he fell off. He got knocked out. You died. Oh, you died physically. You weren't holding your shield up. Like, what does that even mean? Hi. Did you forget that we're just passing by here? To live is Christ and to die is gain? That Paul says, even though it's better for me to be here and to be with you guys, I would much rather depart and go be with Christ? Isn't that what it's about? But no, see, that's... Sadly, that's what it's getting into is wanting the kingdom here. Materialistic items. Prosperity. I mean, you want to stay here, earthly kingdoms, that's what it sounds like. And this is why it's not on us, it's not on our sword or our works, but only those who truly be belong in Him, truly can delight in Him with that, can truly have peace. That's what it is, can truly have that Oh man, like I don't have to, okay, cool, man. I don't have to carry my, do this, and I don't have to worry about this and sharpening my sword. Blasphemy, man. And that's what I want you guys to know. I don't want you guys to think that I'm, I'm persecuting your church. I'm not persecuting your church. I'm persecuting the one who's been embraced behind the scenes and the doctrine that's come into the middle of it. Because I love you guys. That's what it's. That's what it's about. It's not about. Oh yeah, here I go, man. I get a. Now's my chance. No, it's about a, the enemy and the enemy's doctrine and, and the twisting of gospel that's come in and attacked the Lord Jesus Christ and attacked his family and attacked the gospel message. So they say your physical walk is exactly like your spiritual walk. It is. See what they put first though, physical walk? That's the idea. Your physical walk's exactly like your spiritual walk. No, it's not. This is where they fail to be able to divide the fleshly nature from the spirit nature. It's not. Because last time I checked, when I get in with prayer, when I fast, when I get in with the word, when I'm worshiping, when I'm uh, even interacting, or, or the Holy Spirit itself is by spirit. So you cannot tie that in with... Uh, with the physical flesh but you see what they do it's anything to back up their false doctrine no you can have demons right demons can be in that flesh right oh no now it's not now it's on the inside oh but now it's not see you'll see we'll get into it yeah you see which one's first and who's laying burdens always put in the physical first your physical one's gonna go exactly off the spiritual about you walk 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 but hey, you know what? Just like him, what he's teaching, you're to walk so much in the spirit, you're to be righteous, man. So holy, don't even have to hold up your sword, you're all muscly, got everything tuned in on frequencies, don't sin anymore. Yeah, you need to be like him, right? Self-righteous hypocrite, you Pharisee. Yeah, and I'm going to call you a Pharisee because when, if you want to get down to the technical terms of the law, then regardless how you want to go about it, because Pharisees are middle class. So if you want to go with the law and you want to take that aspect, then you're a Pharisee, you're middle class, you're law. What are you going to say? Oh, I got more than you. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Praise God. Because you don't understand. And, and we're going to come back to this too. The reason I bring up Pharisee and I bring up law is, is the Jewish side to it. We're going to come back to it. But yeah, it's uh, so, man, so spiritual. So alive in the spirit. It's just coming out. Everything you do, you just praise and you're alive. Man, you need to be on their frequency, right? You need to be on his frequency. 
I'm just going after how how ludicrous the doctrine is. That's all. And showing. But also allowing God. God is using me to just destroy this. Alright guys, so I apologize. There was a section here that I had recorded and it did not save. And the enemy's trying to work through technology so that I can't get the truth out. It will though. So I'm just going to run over this too, just to kind of speed it up a little bit. So it's all about food, right? But we have the bread of life family. You have the bread of life. He is the true manna. Sorry guys. That's funny. He supplies. It's nothing that we do or add to it. We're totally satisfied, totally filled up on them. But notice how I make it about food because it comes down to the law. These religious scribes, religious Pharisees, putting burdens, always going back to the Old Testament. Yeah, because, I mean, what are you going to say? Uh, oh, you're low, lower, you're poor. Yep, yeah. Because whether you want to go to law... And you want to go to the Jewish side of it and go to Old Testament? We can do that, which we'll come back to it. Or, you know, we can go to the actual context and the true meaning of it and uh, have it be by faith. Let's just go over a couple scriptures real quick, family. I wanted to show you. So, since we're here, let's just go to Luke 6 and 20, uh, 14. Let's go to Luke 14 right here it says in verse 12 then he also said to him who invited him when you give a dinner or a supper do not ask your friends or your brothers or your relatives or, nor your rich neighbors least you should go and invite you back and you be repaid uh, but when you give and feast invite the poor the maimed the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just because the treasure is Christ. The poor in spirit are, is who belongs to God. Those, the, those who the kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor in spirit. Because who Christ is, Christ is who builds them up. Christ is the life. He's the one that takes that little mustard seed and makes it grow. Because it's not by works. So real quick too, let's go to Luke 6 since we're here. Luke 6 21 Luke 6 20 but he lifted up his eyes towards his disciples and he, disciples and he said blessed are the poor for yours is the kingdom of God for blessed are you if you hunger now for you shall be filled because you who weep now for you shall laugh uh, blessed are you who weep now for you shall laugh because he's the, it's the Holy Spirit it's the true bread of life that who fills us up satisfies us gives us flowing waters rivers of flowing water life bread the manna living inside of you um, just to kind of go over a couple of these let's go to James 2 real quick and go to James 2 5 listen my beloved brethren has God not chosen the poor of this world to become rich in faith and the heirs of the kingdom which he had promised those who love him rich in faith um, so let's go to Psalm, uh, 2 Corinthians 8 2 real quick. Sorry, 8 9. 8 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he was rich. Yet for your sakes, he became poor. Because it's spiritual. And it's, it's what he, he took our sin, took our condemnation, our wrath, what we owed. His poverty, that we could become rich. That you, through his poverty. Because it's the grace, it's the gift, it's faith. Because not that he had to or not that he needed to, but because he wants to. It's amazing. Um, 
So just real quick, I know I keep saying that, I apologize. I just wanted to run over a couple of these just to show you guys. 1511, it says, For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. So whether you want to go about it, physical, law, spiritual grace, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You try and twist and turn it, it will not stand. Proverbs 29, 7. So we're already here real quick. Actually, you know what? Let's go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, 6. David says, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him, and out of all of his troubles. This is David, the king of Israel. He definitely had riches. No, the idea of it is because faith, uh, David had faith. David is a foreshadow of Christ to come. This is what, what he's laying the foundations of to show. It's through faith. This poor man. David wasn't poor. But David was poor in faith. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Um, yeah, just one more real quick over here. Proverbs 29. Verse 14, the king who judges the poor with his throne will be established forever. And let's go to Proverbs 29, 7. The righteous consider the cause of poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge. Awesome. I think I missed one on accident, guys. Sorry. It comes down to however you want to go about it. The Lord God, this is His Word, and it, He doesn't change. If you want to go law, grace, old, new, physical, spiritual, it doesn't matter. You try and come against it, it will not stand. And notice how those who, those who are truly in Christ are firm, not shaken, won't be moved. So then you, you hear him say, okay, man man became a living soul by, by breath. It was his Holy Spirit moving. That's not that's just not Jesus' words. Okay, well show me the verse then. But this sounds just like Genesis 1 2 with that hidden uh, esoteric knowledge that they've been lied to about with the spirit moving over the water. Not only are they told that that's a, another birth, which they come from Satan, um, but also that there was another flood. This is who I believe he's getting it to. The most obvious false teacher. Because it, it's funny because they'll stand up there and they'll say, oh yeah, you guys are following this, following that. You're fo following the Talmud. Which technically, if you want to get to it, you it's going to be linked to esoteric hidden cabal uh knowledge which is what you're starting to believe and, and we're going to get back to that but it's it's the this is what i believe he's believing a lie about oh you know well if god's just not gonna continue giving me stuff here then the enemy knows that the enemy wow you know all these riches i mean god's doing this i mean look at what god has given you it's not about you it's about him he's giving you what you have so that you can glorify him but that's why i believe i believe why who he's getting it from the same guy will tell you oh it's not that's not what's recorded in here is not the only flood of noah it actually happened in genesis 1 because they have the oral law right it's just hidden knowledge, esoteric. Come to them. They know. There's, it's, it's all. He's believing a lot, I believe, about how he's a special uh, type of Jewish race. And uh, it's the same guy that he goes to that he totally takes away the uh, deity of Christ. When he says, go to uh, Luke chapter 18, and he says the... Uh, um, rich young ruler comes up to him and he says good teacher and um, he says well Christ says well um, there's not why do you call me good there's not one good but God they'll say oh look at that Christ just uh, 
there you go. He just said he wasn't God. No, because they don't understand. They don't have the Holy Spirit. That's what it comes down to. They don't know. And uh, Christ, Christ was testing his faith. He understood. He knew. The rich young ruler come up to him. Good teacher. The Lord God knew that th that who this man was is a, a Jew, who knew the Old Testament, and was testing his faith. Well, if only God's good, God is standing right in front of him. He's going to test him and see what he said, see what he goes about it. Not, well, I, well don't call me good, because only God's good. Yeah, that's not it. They'll twist it, the scriptures. Christ was testing his faith because they don't like faith. It's all about works. They like to lay burdens. They like to take and steal because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But they'll never steal, they'll never destroy your soul, and they'll never, ever, ever be able to touch the true and living uh, word of God, God himself, his family. I'm not talking about the flesh. He'll never be able to shake it. Remember what Christ says, upon this rock, which is Christ, I shall build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. But yeah, this is what I believe. And we're going to come back to that too. It's just in time. But that's what I believe he's getting it. Getting it from this guy. Um, so, man became life. In, so, Genesis 2-7. Man became life. Real quick. Let me go there actually real quick. I just want to take a look. Sorry, guys. Just want to make sure. Okay. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living being. Now let me ask you something because everything God does is out of love. Out of care, patience. Do you think he just sat there and went and it was over? No. Christ is the word. The word of God. He spoke. He called him. He was probably, when you speak, do you breathe? Yeah, because it's the words. He's probably called out, Adam, I love you, you know, speaking to him. Just like a mom does when she speaks to her child. And I'm not, okay, just like a dad does when he speaks to his child. You know, just that care, that nurture. Not just, <sighs> oh, yeah. Let's go real quick to the scriptures. In the beginning was the Word, and the and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When we go to 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and, and we beheld His glory, the glory as if the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Because Christ the Word is the life, and that life being transferred over into Adam, He spoke it. He spoke it out of love. He didn't... Poof. Yeah, your God cares for you more than that. He won't lie to you like he's lying to them. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, so Adam and calling Adam is breathing and breathing the word of God and becoming alive, just like when hearing faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How do you spread and preach the word? You can't just push on them. Hey, could you imagine? Not today anyway, you wouldn't be able to. There's just no right separation. Yeah, you can't just breathe on them. Could you imagine? Hey, it's okay, it's just the spirit. No, it's, it's words of love because he is the word. And this is what I'm talking about, man. They'll stand up there and condemn those who follow after the Talmud. Specifically highlight it being Polish. Red descendant. We're going to come back to it. Don't worry. But yet they're doing the same things. Not only twisting it, making it about works, but laying burdens.
But you'll hear them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now spirits can also be words as well. I thought, okay, because first, you know, that just wasn't what Jesus said. But, but now, now spirits can also be words as well. Oh, spirits. So when he linked it up to the beginning of Genesis 1, that man became a living soul by a breath. So in reality, his spirits have more power because now spirits can be a word, but the Holy Spirit can. It's just by breath, right? Because what I believe he's going to and learning from some somehow is ancient Jewish mysticism where they're told that they're a specific race chosen and that the devil is truly God and he's not. They're believing a lie. He's going after, he has it mixed up and he has it backwards. He's going and believing the ones who are of the synagogue of Satan. Because they always make it, it's, it always comes down to like race and stuff and flesh and skin. It always comes back to them, I mean. It's what it... <laughs> I just told they're a special race. That's what it is. He's starting to believe a lie. Because he can get more for this little time. And we're st starting to see the truth of what he wanted all along. Using God as a pedestal. Doing something different. And then once you finally get out of there. And, and, and using it to get what you want. But yeah, oh, you just, yeah, you, you'll hear too. Uh, oh, now the spirits can also be words as well. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, you hear him stutter, 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 stutter. Apply it how you like. So that, yeah, that would make, mean that, that spirits have more power than the ghost. It's a life. It's a force. Some describe it as a frequency. You want to know who describes it as a, as a force and a frequency? Albert Pike, a 33rd degree Freemason from the KKK. It goes exactly what, against what you claim to be standing on. And you don't even realize it. Because it's from the occult. It's not the word. It's not from Christ. Prophets or the disciples. What verse is that? Some call it that. Yeah, I believe they do. That would be the occult. Some call it a frequency. It's, it's a life. Mm. It's all the above, right? What verse is that? Frequencies, spirits, you can tune. Or it's the same as the Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? I don't I don't understand. Like what you can do. You can you can have control over those spirits. You see how it's what it's turning into? You can turn frequencies besides the actual like definition the uh, forces frequencies do you see what it's turning into it's turning into witchcraft you can you can come you can uh control them but not the holy spirit right see it's confusion it's the author of confusion it's all confusing and this is what he's sowing because it's the the gospel and the doctrine of the devil so spiritual things can afflict us if god allows it I hope I hope they don't get me with the high frequency, man. Every this they're getting me, man. They're getting me with that high frequency and those forces. Alrighty. I'm not saying that the devil. We obviously the devil. I'm just go. I'm showing how ridiculous this doctrine is, family. And nothing will happen unless God allows it to happen. And if it happens, it's for your own good and for his glory. Yeah, it's just all uh, new age pagan. D demons, I mean, turn up the frequency, turn up the frequency. You see, oh, now we want to go to the word, right? Why, why would all of a sudden we want to go to the word? Because they think that you're giving opinions. Yeah. And watch. It's still going to be out of context. It's still going to be put into own words. And it's still going to be wrong. 
And notice how nobody else goes to any of the above things. Like, none of these things. Okay, so, it says, Revelation 12, 17, 18, dis demonic spirits um, came up from, uh, were coming up from the beneath and influenced the kings of the world. Um, real quick, I put Genesis 6-3. Let's go there real quick. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 days. Oh, I said. So you see the divide of, of spirit and flesh. Because there's the divide. His spirit with flesh. Because the life that came in. So, so it was an actual transfer of God's spirit. So the context is, of course it was. God breathed his life in that first Adam, the foreshadow of our perfect Savior. That's what it is. It's the life to come. He's the one who gives life. Um, so... It says, uh, types of kings making verdicts and laws. Law, you know, it's the laws, 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 laws. Outward, outward, outward. Right? So, in Revelation 12, 17, and 18, demonic spirits are coming up from the beneath. Alright, so let's go to Revelation 12. Real quick. No great sign up here. Now Revelation twelve. Um, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 9 real quick. I think that it could be what he's talking about. Right. Um, then out of the smoke, locusts came up from the earth. And... To them, it was given power as scorpions of the earth. That might be what we was talking about. So, locusts, the four angels, and killing a third of the population. That one. Um. There is one more. Hang on. Let me see. I think it's uh. I kind of have everything thrown together here a little bit. So notice how this is the wrath of God. Okay, right here in verse 13, Revelation 6, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Huh. It's weird. So that's Revelation 16 and 9. Because 17. There's no spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Babylon the Great has fallen has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison in every spell. Okay, so that could be what he's referring to, but it didn't come up from the beneath. What is the beneath? You mean the pit? The bottomless pit? I'll I'll take uh I'll, I'll say the beneath. I guess we'll go with that. So I'll give you the the benefit of the doubt because even though you said Revelation 12, 17, and 18, let's apply that in the context. So not only is it not in here, but if you're applying this now and these de demonic spirits being here now, which is what you're doing, your context is your ideas that these demons are in this world now, it's so weird. I just, I didn't realize that the rapture already happened in Revelation 4. I didn't realize that the mark of the beast already happened in Revelation 13. I didn't realize that the great river of Euphrates was dried up in Revelation 9 and the four kings, uh, the, the angels were let out to destroy a population. I didn't know the seals of God had happened already. And I didn't know the wrath of God had happened already. That's because it didn't. Even if you want to go to Revelation 9. And say out of the bottomless pit. Smoke arose like a great furnace of the sun. And out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt from Revelation 9. Context doesn't line up this same. And that's only just because we this the mark isn't here. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt of not having the mark. Of not having the wrath in there. So not only is it incorrect of the message, the context, but no locusts came upon the earth and power was given to them as scorpions of the earth. And they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth. Hmm. And they were shaped like locusts and was like horses prepared for battle on their head and were crowns or something like golden faces, faces of men. And they had a uh, king over them. Angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is Hebrew, is Abidin, and in Greek it's Apollyon. So it's, it's just so weird because the context, man, I didn't realize that we had already gone through this. I just. Hmm. Horses, uh, the apocalypse. Yeah, that's because this is completely taken way out of context and applied for however he wants. I would argue right now and argue that not only is this proof that you don't need any sort of degrees or schooling, it doesn't matter how long, but I would argue that he is not uh, able to either handle uh, uh, the truth of a scripture. I don't I don't think he should be able to uh I don't think he's capable of handi handling the truth of an actual scripture. This is just so twisted, so turned, so warped. It's such blasphemy, it's such heresy. And not only that is I don't think he actually truly understands. I just don't think he's truly uh I don't think he should um is truly capable or equipped enough to handle the scriptures. So, uh, fallen angels and demonic spirits, yeah, are are in the are in the kings now, right? Sure. Well, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, there are kings of this world, elite leaders who embrace demonic spirits. I'm not saying that I agree with that, but we're not here. We're not in in Revelation. It just sounds like they took it to uh, fit their false religions. And uh, yeah, by the way, um, fallen angels are demons. They're the same. Okay, hang on, guys. I gotta go. I gotta run to the restroom, and it's already three o'clock. So I'm gonna try and kind of skim through this. It might be a little bit late tonight, but hey, it is what it is. I got the time that the Lord gives me, and if I just have to take a little rest tomorrow in between what I got then I will so hang on guys I gotta go to the restroom alright guys let's go ahead and finish this up 
just because it's, it'll start getting kind of late. And honestly, you know what? I don't I don't really mind uh, graveyards. I did graveyard for a really really long time for most of my career. Uh, just doing graveyard, and honestly, it's you know w how peaceful it is too, and just you end up having a lot more time just with you and the Lord. So I don't mind the graveyard at all. I got to get kind of used to it. I'm going to be having more time to actually do this now and, and spend more time uh, doing what the Lord has called me to do. So it'll honestly probably be more at night. But okay, let's just get, let's go through this. So the devil inside the serpent. And you know, that's the thing, man. It's like, when I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about how I don't believe he's uh, capable anymore of handling a biblical text. It's because he, I used to, you know, I really enjoyed listening to him preach. You know, it's just, it's just sad. Because he's good. I mean, that's what he's called for. He's just going after um, riches and the lie. So the serpent is the devil, and we see this is just slowly, 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 slowly starting to kind of grow away. So, because if it, hey Titus, please stop. Thank you. You can hit the ground, dude. Please. You're funny, dude. Um, because serpents in that term would be good if that's the case, but the actual Hebrew content context is offspring um sowing a child a descendant so it's nature it's actual nature and they'll just do anything they can so it, it's the same context as the as the serpent too it's the seed it's not sperm it's just the context is what's you because it's a child you say oh there's no egg well there's no sperm it's because the context is the seed the definition, the actual Hebrew context definition is offspring, child. It's the ser that serpent flesh nature. It's the nature that you got, not the spirit. Not the spirit. He is the spirit of the power of the air. He is the one who's at work in sons of disobedience. Understand that, to disobedience. Ones who have to embrace it. Those who disobey. Because otherwise that would mean that God sends children to hell. And God does not send children to hell. When one fully understands and makes that, because we're born into sin, all of us are born into sin, that's the nature. But it's not the spirit. When we embrace the world and we fully understand and fully start taking our own actions, that's when we break, embrace the spirit of the world. The nature is the flesh. There's an actual offspring. The, the The devil cannot just blow in and create life like God can. It's This is all just hidden knowledge, giving power to the devil, giving glory to the devil. Putting him on the same, I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to the lowest pits of Sheol. Uh, so the spirit is something that you embrace. So because Or your, or your children, or children would have this spirit. It's not, it's the nature, it's the flesh, it's what dies. And Because you're fully aware when you're taking that disobedience, when you're taking on sin. Not saying that you're not born into sin. I'm, not saying, I'm just saying God does not send children to hell. That's why he said bring the child here, bring bring the children here, bring the child here. <laughs> That's why he says bring the children here. Um, you know, sit them here and physically, you know, he meant, you know, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, as physical children, but also he meant it to be reborn, be renew, and to be a child of the living God, sitting there, letting the father nurture you, take care of you. Um, because how do you produce life with some sort of sexual act? There has to be some sort of sexual sexual act that happened here. Because it's life. Otherwise, you're giving the devil the same power as God. You're saying that the devil can create life and have the same power through voice or through word like God does. And that's just heresy. Right? How can you produce life without a, some sort of sexual act? Unless you're, you're God. You can't. 
Because God is the one who creates life. He just uses what was already created. The devil can't create life. It's just his seed. Yeah, because they're, they're putting Satan on the same level as Yahweh. I think it slipped on accident. This is what I'll see. It slowly starts to come out and you'll see. And you see he accidentally says, you'll see right after that, he accidentally says, Satan on the same, um, and told, told us that Satan impregnated Mary. It slipped out of his mouth and he didn't even realize it because by their words, they will stumble. And that's what it is. That's what I believe he's believing the lie. And it slipped out and he said, told us that Satan, when Satan impregnated Mary, because that's what the cabal teaches. Sorry, sometimes I can't read my handwriting. Okay, anyway. Alright, so the devil's seed is not God's seed. Also, he's not as powerful. Duh. He cannot just speak life into existence. See what they're doing? The seed, breath, speaking life into existence. Oh, there wasn't a sexual act. No sexual act. That same breath, that same power type. No. He is trying to twist and turn and teach that the devil is God. We're on the same level as God. And This is a false gospel. Let he who preaches a false gospel be a curse. You want to keep embracing it? So be it. And it's not even embracing it, just preaching it to other people. But yeah, embracing it too. Yeah, because life came from God and the devil altered it. That's why the flood happened with Noah to save the DNA. That's what the same thing is happening today and uh, what we see in the world today. Hopefully I didn't. Hopefully that's all right. Uh, but why it's starting to uh, what he wants to uh, change it. You know that mark. It's the same thing because he can only change the, the DNA. Because it's the nature. So. Uh, it says which led Eve to make a, a, a decision, a choice to obey Satan. And eating, it's an action. It's turning it into works. It's turning the faith into works. But also saying Satan is not only to speak life into existence, but um, to alter, to overcome, to change one by his words. He's giving Satan the same power as God by words. It led Eve to make a decision. The same with Adam. They ate the fruit. They didn't just, they were putting... Their trust, the reason it happened was because they were putting their faith and their trust into the devil, into the serpent. And that's why you have this nature. That's why you have skin that sheds off. That's why a lot of people's tongues are slit. That's why you have angel wings. That's why the cerebral cortex, the spine is a serpent because it's the serpent nature. That's why there's enmity between her seed and, and the serpent seed. Capital. Because the flesh and the spirit. Not spirit and spirit. Because it, it was Adam's trust. It was their trust in God. And then they disobeyed God. No faith. Because it comes down to faith, not works. He just got them to be deceived by doing a work. It was the trust and the faith, just like it. They always twist it. just like they'll say, oh yeah, Abraham went through works. But Abraham was justified by faith alone because Abraham already had it in his heart and in his mind to go. That's why he went. That's why she listened. That's why they ate because they already had faith. 
That's why when they twist the doc, uh, scripture and say, oh, James is faith without works is dead. James is not saying that salvation requires works. He's saying that if one truly says that they're saved through faith, then you'll be able to see it clearly in their life. You'll be able to see the works that come with it. He's not saying that you need, uh, it's not salvation faith. They always twist it and try and turn it into works and try and take not only the glory, uh, but the, sim uh, the simple faith and trust and make it about works, what you do. Self-righteous. So, the scriptures don't change. It's also the foundation of the word. It's so strong, you know. All it takes is just one little error for the spirit to notice, right? If it's not built on that foundation, it won't stand. That's why it continues to go. That's why it's like a family. That's why it stays firm. It won't be shaken. It won't be moved. Because it's built on the true foundation. All it takes is that one little... And it comes crashing down. And heavy as its fall. Hey, bud. Hey, wake up. Having puppy dreams. Good boy. He says, does that make sense? Some of you are following and saying, man, what is he saying? Yeah. Yep. Does that make sense? Some, I mean, some of you are, are saying, man, what's he saying? Even your followers. Just something doesn't, doesn't uh, seem right. Is that something that you say to your church, to your church members? Does that make sense? Man, he's looking at me. What are you saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Test me. Test me. Is that what you say to them? Test me? Test me. So self-righteous even to your church, to your members. Look at you. Putting burdens on them. Test me. Okay, I will. The word of God will. And once again, it, it will, it will fall. It will fail. This is very cultish, super pride. Make It's like, notice how it is, it's more younger too. It's just like in a fear, because that's what it is. Afraid. Trust me. No. Okay. Do not be afraid to stand firm on the word of God. It's he who protects you. He who guides you. It's he who will allow you to overcome. What is the enemy going to do? Kill you? Awesome. You're going to go be with the Lord quicker. But come on. Don't be afraid, guys. So the spirit, the, the devil, uh, did not into enter into Eve at the garden. A seed did. It's nature. So if the spirit is is in Eve, then that means it's not in the air. Right? Or of the air. And babies are not born with the devil's spirit. That's flesh and nature. So you cannot provide rightly divide word, truth, law, grace. He used to be. And that's why I just believe it's just got to the point of not caring. And it's it's just showing. And it's almost like he just wants to embrace it. Okay, so be it. It was defiled by all mankind, by nature, and ha infants. Death. Knowing the flood. Yeah, I mean, like, why do you need to change the, if it's already, if it's already there and it's already that nature, why would you need to change it if it's all good, right? If, if defile by all mankind, all nature and infants and, and death and know with the flood, then why would we change it today if, if it is, if it's his, huh? If it's his children, does that mean that the devil, the spirit is in, was in knowing that you see what they're teaching? 
Adam and Eve embraced the seed, the spirit of the wicked one. A spirit or a seed? I thought God was putting enmity between it. That's weird. Not between the spirit. They're, he's giving Satan power and glory. And, and, and we do not all have um, tainted nature inside of us, by the way. He might. But you, family, do not. You have the Holy Spirit. He's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. We do not all have tainted nature in us. He's talking to the church. You're blaspheming the Spirit. It's flesh and spirit. Those born of the... Door, it's always the same, man. Let's, those born of the Holy Spirit cannot be born and have a demon. Have the world spirit. The Holy Spirit is a house is not divided. A house divided. Holy Spirit over in the corner. Hey, fill me up. Hey, I, I know legions in here. I got seven demons and many more in here, but we're gonna share. We're gonna split. It's divided. No, they'll say, "Oh no, a house divided," meaning uh, an actual house. No, see, it's law. They always try and put in with law and with works. You cannot drink from the cup of devils and from the cup of God. This is a, a, a covenant. This is saying that the devil has the same amount of power as God. That's ultimately what it is. All right, so we see these same spirits with Egypt, with Pharaoh, with Jezebel. But I thought it was Revelation 9 and 12. It's so weird. And these are the same spirits. So these same ones here, those same spirits in Egypt and Pharaoh, Jezebel, Revelation 9, 12, same source, maybe a few of them in different things, obviously same spirit, but it's the same source, but different spirits. You see, he says they manifest over and over. It's weird. They manifest over and over, but I'm pretty, I thought they were, did they, were they not released from the beneath? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, were they not released from the the uh, the pit? No, they're, they're manifest over and over. I thought it was the bottomless pit. Or wait, no, that's the beneath. It's a pr prideful, prideful spirit. It, proud spirit, spirit of pride. Is it a spirit? See, and this is another thing. Is it spirit or spirits? See, it's confusing. It's an author of confusion. So in confusion. Putting Satan on the same... Do you see what they do? They tie and twist it and make it so you your mind has to try and catch up. Because it's games. This is how they manipulate. And, and eventually you just accept what they're saying. Because it all starts to sound the same. A proud spirit, spirit of pride, spirit or spirits. And it says he specifically points out homosexuality pride, which, all right. But what about greed? What about idolatry? What about lust? How come just homo specifically? That wouldn't be because we link the actual, um, that wouldn't be a personal attack because of, uh, my background and what happened and what usually happens and also when you leak leak up the first Polish Jew I wonder I wonder maybe if he's attacking this specifically I don't know could be could be not maybe he just has something with this one specifically or just doesn't want to highlight greed pride idolatry lust but I don't know I don't know if you realize I'm married Just all over the place. Sexual lifestyle, sexual pride. Pride is pride. It's how you imply it. It's just like, you see what they're doing. It's how they separate. It's all about outward. It's just like a, a, a race, if you would. And I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about like Hispanic. I'm talking about like a, a like a, like a, they believe that they're a specific Jewish race. A special Jewish race. Um, and he's believing a lie. Because he's got it backwards. Psst, 
specifically implies the race, specifically says how it's not black. Okay. And then false Jewish. Something's tied in here. I wonder if he realizes, I don't think he knows that I was adopted. We'll come back to that. He says one third of angels are 33% coming down. He says, is it Daniel? Is it Daniel Revelation 12 or 9? Did they fall? Because we're in Revelation? Or did they come up from the pit? I'm so confused. What is it? Did they come from the beneath? Are they manifesting? Or did they come down? We're in Revelation 12? Don't tie in Daniel to don't act like you can don't act like you can look at these Old Testament scriptures and line it up with the New Testament as if a revelation. You're so silly. See, it's all started in the garden. Okay. What context and what verse? Read from the word. Well, what verse? That's why they just jump around. It came down, manifested, came from the pit. One third of the angels were tie in the verse. And don't try and tie in Daniel. And then he says, the yeah, sorry, I think I said it before, but then he says the devil impregnated Mary. So, in other words, Satan. Kabbalah, Kabbalah is hidden uh, esoteric. I think it slipped out on accident. Um, and it, it wouldn't be like, like it wouldn't be a big deal, guys, obviously, if it wasn't a false gospel. But if, if the fruit didn't line up with what he's teaching, then it wouldn't be a big deal. But the fruit's all there, too. It all lines up. And he always goes back to Eve. Um, he, he, he went back to Eve, but he didn't realize he said Mary. Because I believe he's getting this from the same false teacher today. In Genesis 3.15, it says your seed and her seed is something sexual. But he's teaching that Satan's as powerful as God. I'm sorry, I kind of went over this again. That's why it's Cain and Abel, Cainable. That's why there were two different born. They still had the flesh. But that's why one was different than the other. But you line it up, it's Cainable. Kill. But it was all just that seed. The highlight. They always take Christ out of it, man. So it says we so we we do not wrestle within ourselves. You might, but we don't. Family, you don't. You are born of the Holy Spirit. You belong to the church of the living God, his actual church. You wrestle and you're at war with uh waging war with the flesh, the impulses of the flesh. And I don't mean that obviously by by flesh of other people because it's a spiritual war. Um but yeah, we don't see all the twists. It's a spiritual war, but you don't wrestle inside yourselves. He might, but you don't. You have the Holy Spirit. What are you going to wrestle about? What is there? What is the Holy Spirit in there going? Give me the give me the knives and the forks. Pass it over. And the spirit of the world is going. Come and get it yourself. Like you see what the how bla blaspheme and false this is. You know, like uh, just. Adding and taking away and twisting, but like just defiling the glory and the power of this, the same God they say they cast these demons and they do all these wonderful signs and wonders. It's just confusing, right? Yeah, you don't wrestle with the Holy Spirit, you wrestle with your own flesh. So the spirit that worked within us in times past is at times 
trying to make a foothold in our life. But when did we lose the Spirit? If we wrestle with the Spirit that's with, within ourselves, I'm so confused. This is hard. <laughs> I'm obviously I'm just kind of being silly, but this can be hard and difficult. So you can see, I mean, it's not funny. Obviously, I'm just laughing because I'm going to get upset if I don't. Um, oh, you got the spirit of anger must be waging war inside. So at times it's trying to make a foothold in your lives. So when do we happen to lose this spirit? Does the spirit just have access is going because we wrestle within ourselves, right? It's confusion. And this is the NIV, of course. Always the NIV. Uh, um, do not give a foothold to the devil. Well, how? If he's inside of us, he already has a foothold. A, it's a stronghold. A place in your life. Or a soul. Give the ax devil access to ports to you? I thought he already did. It's like... I thought he already had a spot inside of us. So then the, the KJV, which I think he actually references. No, he doesn't. Oh, he might actually. Might have been the King James. Yeah, King James. I think he actually did, which is a room, place, home, inside. Let's go here real quick. I want to look at this. Yeah, a place. Okay, so not a foothold. And that's why the, it matters. That's why what type you have, is it matters. So place is a home on the inside. Do not give a devil a place in the hole in the inside with the NIV and what he's teaching is that he already has. Don't give him a foothold. Grasp anywhere on the outside, inside. No. See, because stuff is going to happen to the outside of you, your flesh. It's the nature. But what they try and do and twist it so that you'll eventually fall away and blame God and just twist it. But it's the fruit of the spirit is peace, patience, kindness, self-control. So if you if you don't this if you don't have self control, it's not of the Holy Spirit, but something else. Also, with how they refer it to, they'll refer to lashing out or or oh you know oh uh, man if if I'm like man I was kind of getting angry they'll say oh there you go there it is but they're up there man they have so much self control. Remember I told you guys that you can be so angry and keep it cool. It's like, uh, it's like if, uh, your child, or if you're like, you're in, uh, in the middle of like family or in the middle of like public and you're, you know, you have a child that you're learning, you're, you're teaching. You can see him now going to try and twist. Oh, he doesn't have discipline on his child because their child, right? is just like, you try and tell him, but we're in public and it's the manners and you're just like. <laughs> but obviously it's not like that but just using that as a reference and like how 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 people do it we're like hey <laughs> stop it you know um that's not actually showing anger so you can do it he's very manipulative and they'll do it to where they put burdens on you and make them so oh hey the fruit of the spirit is patience, peace, kindness, self-control. And if you don't have, if you don't have self-control, see, it's that's where he gets it mixed up. If you don't have self-control, well, you don't. The spirit does. Because he cannot rightly divide flesh and spirit, law and grace and truth. People run, see what he's doing? People running around, oh man, I, I'm not saved. I don't have the Holy Spirit. I don't have self-control. And then they get mad and look at what they do. This is such blasphemy and her heresy. That you are attacking and going after 
the gospel message in the church of Christ and laying these burdens upon the family of God just like the Pharisees were because that's exactly what you are right now. You're a Pharisee. I just pray that you repent and come back. Or don't. If you choose to be an enemy of the living God, and you choose to be an enemy of the, the family of God, then make that choice. And by, I don't mean by words. I mean, we'll, we'll see it by, by fruit. And we'll line up. Yeah. Right. Oh no, I don't have self-control. No spirit. Oh. But what about the devil's spirit that's already inside of us? I'm still trying to figure out. And what about the ones that came out of the from the beneath? What about those ones? What about the ones that were manifested and the ones that are coming down? They're all over the place. What do I do? <laughs> I get it. See how you can just tie. Oh, end times. Ooh, better pull anything I can out of Revelation. Tour. It's a tour. It's a big show. It's a big parade. And I don't mean that on the family and on the church of God and those who are true believers, those who are even teachers of true believers. I'm talking about the one who's controlling it and running it. It's a tour now. It's a tour. Hear ye, hear. Come on in. Stop sowing. Stop preaching the gospel message. I'm going to take this entire time that I had where I could have been praising God, uplifting the church, but instead I'd rather attack God, attack the church, and make a defense about it because someone has pointed out your false teaching, your deceptive, hypocrite lies of heresy, and your cabalic, uh, esoteric, hidden knowledge. And you're twisting in your lies because you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. That lays burdens on the church of God. But God sees everything and he knows it all too, so. So that devil that's already in us, right? Does he have self-control? Weird. So you have the devil in you, right? Cut that, right? Yeah, it's because you don't have the spirit, family, church. He might, but you don't. Yeah, he just he just does not have understand cannot understand scripture, context, to nature, pulls it out. I just don't he just chooses not to rightly handle a text. Putting it on you. It's what you do. See, it's all about you. You, 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 you. See, they're standing up there righteous, so righteous. You need to do this. And if you don't do it like this, well, it's because of you. Mm. Let's see about that. If the Spirit of the Lord is holy, and you are not living, and you are not living holy... What spirit is that? Well, that would be the fleshly nature. I'm holy, so be holy. <laughs> it's just about works. Oh, if you're not living holy, uh, no, no spirit. What spirit is that? It's always about works. They're so self-righteous, sitting up there glowing in the dark. Don't lie. So perfect, so holy on the inside, on the outside. The spirits manifesting in Revelation, uh, Revelation nine. We'll go to eighteen. Uh, spirits coming from the beneath, and uh, the spirits inside of you. But man, he is just sitting there. He is so good, man, holding up his his sword, his shield. We need to be like that, right? Yeah, it's about works. It's the same thing as, oh, a, a, a bad tree cannot bear bad fruit. So if you bear bad fruit, you're going to cut it down. You're right. You can't. That's why it's the Holy Spirit. That's why the flesh dies. 
It's because you're slowing down and you don't understand. What you have contradicts everything. He's so holy and righteous, so self-control, right? A dream conqueror, a frequency turner, has muscles for his armor. Well, the fruit and the words contradict everything, so you can believe whatever you want. Here, let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. it do this man it's like that kind of seems a little bit different okay i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh spirit flesh what they'll say oh you need to walk in the spirit oh they made it about works they're taking away salvation in christ by faith and what you do but they're good man I say then, okay, for the lust of the for the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not know the things that you wish. Don't let this blasphemer, this false teacher, put this on your shoulders. Walk in the spirit like him, right? He's so holy. He doesn't have any lust of the flesh or anything. He's a dream conqueror. His fruit glow in the dark, man. Man. Yeah. Let's go here, guys. I'll show you. There is therefore now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Meaning... For the law of the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, it's the nature, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So don't set your mind on things of the flesh. So there's no condemnation anymore. He is laying burdens upon you, making it about works and what you do, taking away from the salvation, the true message of just believing, trusting, uh, and, and giving your sins to Christ, repenting. So if you're not walking holy and you're not walking in the patterns of life, then you're walking in a different energy. It's not the energy of the Lord. What verse is this? <laughs> this is works. Don't mess up. God's up. Don't you mess up. Up there up. Don't you mess up. But you need to be holy like he is. Perfect in all his ways. There's only one that was perfect in all his ways. That's Christ. You're not Christ. Christ is inside of you. So walk in the patterns of this life. What verse is this? See what they do? Twisting it about works, about the world. Putting yourself in righteousness in this world. Mixing flesh and spirit. Energy. It's always the new age that comes out always. And that's why I said it just keeps coming out more and more. Slowly and slowly. Guys, the only energy I could find in the scriptures is from the message version, the message, the New Age Hinduism, Buddhism. And that's uh, Philippians, if you guys want to look it up, it's all pagan. Philippians chapter 2 verses 13 to 23. So those with understanding... 
um, operate, ah, those with understanding operate in the excellent spirit like him. Wow. He, he's given us understanding. He's up there giving us understanding. So holy. It's almost as if he's like the savior. He's so self-righteous. Since when, when was one time that we gave praise to the father? What about the blood, the birth, repent, faith, the gospel itself? Oh, it's just... I think I might have missed a page. I just wanted to go over something too, though. I just want to make sure I didn't miss a page. Because it's important. When you put the gospel and you're tying this on my family. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is... You wonder why the, the Jews don't like you, right? And I'm not talking about you, family. I'm talking about this false preacher. You're sitting up there blaming them for following the Talmud, yet you're doing just as they are, what you're doing with the gospel. But you're standing there so self-righteous. God has God has more God has more respect and compassion on them than he does on you. Because they're just stubborn. You're attacking his people. You don't even know exactly. You're just assuming in the way you came about it. We'll get to it. Don't worry. Polish. We'll get to it. It's like I said. I don't. I don't think you realize I was adopted. Um. But how about you know? He, how about you show them some love? You don't. You think they're so stupid? That's why they laugh at you. Look at you. Oh. I'm so holy, there's no change. You're nothing but, you look just like the world to them. Because it's the fruit. They know this is God's people. You treat them like they're stupid. He has more compassion and more respect and patience for them. Because they're just stubborn. You at least know the truth. But look at what you're doing. Love is patient. You know, you sit there and, and point at them and say, you know, you twist the law, you do all this and follow this, and yet you're doing the same thing with this esoteric, hidden, cabalic rituals that has made its way into the church, and you're, you don't realize that you got it backwards. The same spirit that is going about that, of what you're condemning, is the same spirit that you're following. You're being deceived. He he think that's why he says he thinks he has some sort of special bloodline. So self righteous, you know. And and they he thinks that like they just can't see. Like these are God's people. And I'm not talking to church, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about the others that go out there. I love the others. You know, I've watched they're good brothers, man. They go out there right on. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you as a leader. Why they don't like you and why they don't respect you. Look at you. Look at your fruit. So there's a seed of unrighteousness that comes from the devil. See where this is going. <laughs> it's the burden. So self-righteous. So we see that there's a seed of unrighteousness. Um, just taking, twisting it. You'll just trust in the Holy Spirit, family. He will show you. 
I'm just still trying to figure out where that spirit was that we wrestle in ourselves. Was he done? He had enough. Right? No. That's where I stopped the video. That's where I just ended it because... Yeah, I just, I don't want to listen to it anymore, honestly. It's just tra trash. It's what it is. And it's so, it's so cute, you know, how they work. Oh, they all come out and they come together. Oh, you don't think the Holy Spirit is a, 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 a living source of life, of water that continues to flow? It's his, you don't think, it, we don't go off of our, our own strength. It's him. You don't think he's going to make time. Anything that goes up against him and his word psh, won't fall. So, it, you know, it's, it's. It's just so cute. They just come together, and and don't worry. I'll be I'll be getting to you too, Mister. Uh, don't don't grieve the Holy Spirit now. Oh, so sad. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. As if the whole, you're making the Holy Spirit just so weak. Holy Spirit is just going. Well, just grieve the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. You're grieving me. Just because you're weak and you don't have a firm foundation doesn't mean that you can twist the scriptures and the context and make the Holy Spirit that way as, that way as well. Please don't be mean. Please don't be mean. Please don't be mean. Don't lead people away from God and ruin their faith and twist the scriptures. And, and twist the message of the gospel. Don't grieve. Always make it about works. Always the same thing. What you do. It's on you. Right? Oh, you make God sad. He knows. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. They know all the emotions of the Holy Spirit. Just because they're weak doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is. But they know. They know. You hurt me. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you. Always putting burdens on others. Always making it about works. And, you know, you, you know, since you twist it and, and say, since you're, ex yeah, this is what the, this is what they're going to do. They're saying they're saying that those who are uh, exposing wolves, those who are standing and and uh, exposing false doctrine and false teaching and the false gospel, oh, you're grieving, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. No, don't do that. Yeah, because they don't want to be pointed out. You're grieving the Spirit with your anger and with your talk and. And yeah, it's always out of works, always out of, always out of context. It's like Ephesians chapter four, verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your wrath, nor give a place to the devil. So be angry, but do not sin. It's, it's righteous anger. Kind of like when... Wolves come in against the flock and start twisting the gospel and leading people astray and uh, putting burdens on them and taking away the glory of the Almighty. So, honestly, too, it's um, be angry and do not sin so but what they're doing is making it context out of out of works but in reality because it's it's not what goes into a, a man's mouth that defiles him but what comes out and it's a more abundant you know by a more abundant of what keeps coming out their tongue so honestly it's by destruction the corrupt the greek definition um, for corrupt, which is what they're going to try and twist it into, it works means destruction, which is the devil. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. So by by the words, because it's uh, the only thing the devil has is the gospel, and he can twist it. And in doing so, he's twisting the word of God, and he can do so by laying 
burdens on people. And this is what they're doing. Always making it about works. And, and it's the words, words of death, right? Kind of like the false gospel and kind of like the false teachers. Stop leading them away. Stop twisting the gospel. Stop taking the glory away from my Lord Jesus Christ and, and putting burdens on the church. And then I won't greet, greet the Holy Spirit. He has a, he's, he's close with the Holy Spirit. So. Okay. I figured there was probably going to be a time that I was going to do this and I'm going to be put in a corner. Do, when this other video that he did, he, th he I think he thinks I'm Polish. And I think he thinks I'm a Polish Jew. Because when you look at it, the emphasis and you take Rabbi Akiva and that specific European race of Polish and specific Northern Europe, and the Talmud, even though he's doing the same, I got something for you. I got some news. So you're a Jew. So I am also a Jew. I was adopted, and I don't think he realizes this. I want to show you guys something, and it doesn't matter. The Lord is having me do this to show you guys how this will never stand, and that there's no difference. All right, so this is my ID. This is my name. This is my birth name. This I was adopted at a very young age. And this is my original name, Constantino. Because I'm Turkish, Romanian. With a little bit of uh, um, Spanish Latino. And obviously some white, so. Let's do some. I have my actual, too. I have my actual, like, DNA, but I'm just going to show you guys how this links. Because I think he thinks I'm a Polish Jew. Um, but Constantino was my birth name. This is my biological father. The Lord just used him. Put two people together. And that's another thing. Sometimes, guys, the Lord is the one that creates life. And sometimes he will put two people together to make a specific life. Um, so, yeah, this is my name. This is my birth name. My birth father. Not my, not my father. And then this is my adoption. This is my dad right here. Because there's no man on earth, my father. And capital F. People say, oh, you said it. It's a capital F. The context means for the... They always make it about works. The context is putting faith in the uh, idols. Um, But yeah, so... Um, Wazinski would be Polish and Italian. And I don't think he realizes that. Because... What I'm linked to and my DNA comes from Turkey. Because I'm Turkish. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys a couple things. So. I think I got... Oh yeah, have fun with that little Nas X album. That's what I'm gonna um That's what I'm gonna be doing here shortly too, another video. So it's um just the Roman Empire, but before it was that, because it com comes from Constantine, and that's my lineage. Sorry guys.
sorry guys, uh, not quite, sorry, not quite yet guys, soon. Okay, sorry, just kind of getting organized here real quick. Should have been a little bit more prepared, I apologize. Alright, so. Um, this is where I come from, Anatolia. just wanted to kind of link it and kind of show you guys. I apologize. Sometimes this app, I still haven't gotten a new app. I just haven't got, uh, gone through with it. Sometimes it cuts, but um, yeah, let me go here actually real quick. Um, Cause I have the DNA too. I just didn't get it from my parents. They're the, they're the ones who have it somewhere. I, when I was adopted, I just didn't even. So, because it all comes about to Constantine. And uh, that's the Jewish surname, Constantino. And it, it links to the city, um, Constantinople, which is Turkey. It's Turkish and it's in Asia Minor. And it's part of the Roman Empire, what happened before with the Jewish dispersia. So, Anatolia, what we just saw with Western Asia, is, linked, is Turkey and it's North African. So, the Anatolia Jews linking that, tying it with Turkey, that's, that's my lineage. And Constantino, I wanted to show you guys this too. Not that it matters, I'm just... I think this is it. Nope. I'm sorry. Because I think he thinks that like um. I think he thinks I'm Polish. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me show you guys this real quick too. I should have kind of edited it, but this is just to show you guys too. Um, I apologize. It's just really late. It's not it this. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing the hypocrisy of it. Um, so this is my I'm just line it up. Robert Anthony Constantino. My name's Anthony, obviously. Sorry guys, but let me just go and I'll show you. I think I kind of put it here too. Just so Robert A, right here down here at the bottom. Father's name, Robert A. Constantino, this is him. Passed away in his home. He was an alcoholic. Didn't know him, never talked to him. So, hopefully he was saved. Highly doubt it, so, you know, but his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. You don't know what was going through his heart, his mind at the last moment. We don't know. So, um, so the history in Jews in Turkey, it's Hebrew, Spanish, Portugal, which linked to, obviously, and Antolia, and it, until the Ottoman Empire, and, and red is... Romanian, the um, Romanian, if you would. But I'm that's more um, southeast. I'm more southeastern uh, Europe. So if you want to even tie my Jewish line into Europe, it's only southeast. It's not north. So I think that's why he's getting the red hair mixed up. So I'm a uh, Sephardi Jew. A Spanish, a Spanish Jew. Constantinople, Constantine, linked to Turkey. And I'm a, a Sephardic Jew from Spain, Portugal, North Africa, in the Middle East. I'm not an Ashkenazic. I don't. I think he thinks I am, and I'm not. That's the irony of it. Which is France, Germany, Eastern Europe, but he specifically highlights. Uh, Poland 
And if you want to uh, do the uh, Mizorachi, uh, North Africa, Middle Africa. So let's just go over this too real quick since we're here. No, oh, no, it's not it. It's just the Jewish dysphoria or exile. So that's not, that's not it. Um, what I'm looking for, I'm just looking for, hang on, I'll show you guys this one right here. Sorry, it's just really late. Thank you for bearing with me, guys. Especially when this doesn't even matter. Right here. So, the origin, Constantin. But when you go down here to where it's actually spelled, um, I'll show you guys right here. You can link it up too. It, it's constant Constantino under Italian. There's links to the Italian. Um, let me find it. Let me find it. Uh, Constantino under Portuguese. Constantino under Spanish. That's what it is in that. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So, here, right here. So, Constantino, Greek, Portuguese, Spanish, also Italian. So, this is me. Um, uh, Safari. Spain and Portugal. West Asia, North Africa. Oh, whoops. Um, real quick, let me go here. I wanted to go here too. I had something else. I think it's like all the same, but. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm not Ashkenazic. Descendants from France, Germany, and Eastern Europe. I'm Sephardic. And also, too, it's not. I'm not an Ashkenazi, uh, Nazi Jewish. It's a German speaking Polish. Um, it, it's false. It's it's not a Turk from Kazakhstan. That's not what it is. I'm a I'm a Sephar, uh, Sephardi Jew from Antolia, which is Turkey, linked to Turkey. All from Constantine. So. Let me see here. Because I wanted to show you guys this too, actually. Because this shows you too, actually, where it directly links to my DNA. Where it comes from. Obviously, what you're seeing, but... Um, I think this is pretty cool too. I mean, obviously not the city, but just where it's at. Spirit, thank you for the thank you for the energy. So yeah, this is where I want to show you guys though, just on the map. Sorry, just trying to find it so. It's right here, it's up in Turkey.
Sorry. Sorry, guys. Better not mess up. Better not mess up. Better not mess up. Oh, you know what? Hold up. Yep. Okay. So, right there. Right in Turkey. It's where I come from. The closest to the closest to it right here. So right on the Asian side. Here in Turkey. Which actually, let me see. I'm just trying to see if there's like more of a, I like that one down there kind of, but it's just, I don't know why it's not. Cool. Anyway, so yeah, so let's let's take that note real quick. So I'm just using it as hypocrisy because it surely doesn't mean anything. So real quick, let's go. If this is the real name, if it's the real name, Jamaica, Spain and Portugal, and then France and United Kingdom. So you you might have a little bit of what I have, which you also might have France and United Kingdom, though, which is exactly what you were persecuting. Hmm. Hmm. So if that is truly it. Anglo-Saxon people. It's funny. Um, real quick. Hang on. Sorry, guys. So you see... Oh, yeah. That was the other one right here. The other one that I wanted to show you guys. I don't know why I clicked off. I'm sorry. Um, Spain, Portugal. But... I think... Is Ireland.
we see the Spain and Portugal and France and the UK. Don't forget that. But we also see Ireland. Ireland. And it's really sad that I have to do this. Prehistoric people were, were dark skinned and had blue eyes from Ireland. Because this is why I said I have to do this. Why do people from different parts of the world have different colored skin? Tropics. Dark skin. Medium skin. Adaptive traits with the geography and the sun's ultraviolet. So. Hmm. I think. It's weird because history of Jews in Latin joined the Spanish and Portuguese expedition, so it came after, turned into Catholic. Hmm. I wonder if it's an Ashkenazi. Maybe it's a hypocrite and he doesn't even know it. That's why I don't realize he thinks I was adopted and he thinks I'm And I'm just showing, using that to show you guys how it, it doesn't matter. There's nothing different, nothing special. All right. So, let's do this real quick. Actually, you know what? Let's go to, all right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay, so pursue, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Devil's trying to make it to where I don't have the word. Not gonna happen. Okay. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Um, let's go to verse 5 and 6. For I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So we see that tongues can be allowed if he interprets it. So the church can receive edification. So verses 12 and 13. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So we see that this is okay as long as he can interpret it for the church. All right, 22. Okay, with men on their tongues. Okay, sorry, 27. Okay, how is it, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you have a psalm, a teaching, tongue, a revelation. Okay, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. And I'm just doing what you call me to do, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord.
faith, hope, peace, love finished all in uh, grace for his sheep are his own. I know my sheep and my sheep know me and they follow my voice all at once as you know I'm with you for the father is amongst his people. Know that peace, know that he is with us watching, uh, giving peace, assurance, love. Children of the Most High God of Israel. Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew and also for the Greek. No difference. So, yeah, don't let... Don't let them put burdens on you. Don't let them twist the scriptures. There's no difference. And there's, you have to apply it correctly because he goes off of his will, his way. And it's all done by, by him. And family, you're free. You're free. He did everything for us. He paid it all. And uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing how he works through you guys. And it's just so amazing. So it's really late. I I uh, kind of started a little bit later today, so I'm kind of like an hour behind. Um, I've kind of been getting used to the graveyards, but I apologize if this video is really long. I just wanted to show, you know, okay, if, if nothing's going to stand, and if that's the route you want to take, fine. But yeah, you guys are good because you have the Holy Spirit. It's all already finished, and... Uh, we're going to be with the Lord soon. So God bless you guys. Have a good night. I'll see you soon.